topics that we're going to cover today are four. The first one, the problem and related research that we've done to show how it is impacting the organization. The second one will be the proposed solution and related research. So we have a solution and we will research, we will show how the research for this person, we will show how the research for this solution has worked. Thank you for meeting me here today. My name is Julio Espinosa. And today we're here to discuss the attendance policy that was implemented back in 2015. Today's objective is to show how this attendance policy is creating a problem for the organization. It's creating a problem of retention, holding its employees, unjust terminations, and voluntary resignations. So let us look at the four topics that we're going to cover today. Four topics being covered today are problem and related research, the problem to the attendance policy, proposed solution and related research, re related research, and also details for the implementation of the solution, details for evaluating the effectiveness of the solution. Let's move on and look at the first one. Here, we're looking back at the attendance of 2014 for the market of Tucson, Arizona. In 2014, the average employee for each month has been calculated and the total number of employees that were late for the entire year. For January, we had three employees late out of the entire workforce in the market out of the 46 employees being employed. And absent, there were two. If we look at these numbers and figure out the average, okay, of late employees for the month of January through December, we will see that the average Okay, percentage was 6.6 .6 of the workforce was late. That is 6.6 .6 out of the 46 employees. And 4.3 were absent. 4.3% were absent. Okay. Th these numbers here, by the organization standards, are considered extreme. Extreme absenteeism. Well, By, by rule of thumb, organizations across the board and educational institutions have agreed that if an employee is to be considered a chronic absenteeism issue, they at least need to be absent 10% of their entire work schedule for the year. So that averages to 10 18 or 20 days per year. So this is before the 2015 policy was uh, implemented. 2015 attendance policy was implemented. So here we're looking at 2015 and we're gonna see that yes, there has been improvement from 2014, 2015. We can see that the number of late employees has been reduced by more than half, and so have those that have been absent by more than half. So what do these numbers mean? The difference being late, okay? It was a 2.2, so the improvement from last year to this year on employees that were late, there was an improvement of 2.2 improvement. And the difference in being absent was 2.1%. What do those numbers mean? Are they a big difference? Well, hmm. 
now we're looking at the problem. The problem was not employees being absent or being late. The problem is the attendance policy. Look the drastic change in personnel the policy has done. In 2014, the organization had 46 employees. Today, the organization only has 24. 14 were terminated and 10 resigned, voluntarily resigned due to the attendance policy. This is, cre this is creating a retention problem here with the organization. We can, clearly see that, we can clearly see that those numbers are very high. What does it mean? What, does it mean? what do those numbers mean to the organization? Apart from losing you know, productivity and incurring other costs such as recruitment, training, new hire, overtime, and much more, okay, the organization, according to research done for them to new hire and replace those employees that left, those 24 employees, the average cost is going to be $25,000. Now remember, there were 24 that left. So let's do the math. 25 times, actually 24 times 25,000 is a total of over $600,000 invested since the attendance policy came into place. So again, the issue is the attendance policy, not the employees being absent or late. No matter how the numbers are worked, high salary, low salary, the average cost for any position in any organization falls under Twenty-five to $30,000, okay? Let's move on. Let's see what that, that says. Research has been done, okay, on the attendance policy that's currently in place that is causing all these problems. The proposed solution is this. So, the organization, the organization has implemented a control policy, attendance policy, a control attendance policy, that should have improved those numbers drastically. But as we saw, there was only 2.2, 2.1 difference, percent difference from 2014 to 2015. What I'm trying to show you here is that the attendance policy in place, research shows that it has little improvement on folks that have low to average absence. Yes, there will be a big difference with those that are chronic absentees. Here, let's compare. Research was done among 336, okay, workers, random organizations with attendance issues. 46.6% of the pre-year were reduced to 30.5% of the post year. However, the average and the low absentees had very minimal. Look at here, the difference, 2.5, 2.7, 17.7, 12.7. Very little difference. What, did this, what does this mean? What do these numbers mean again for the organization? We're trying to illustrate that there's a problem with the attendance policy that there needs to be a solution implemented. We have one. The previous attendance policy offers this. Accrual points for being late, absent, or calling out sick. The difference, it's right here. Currently, we're sitting at 12 months in effect. So for the points to fall off, for an example, employee A, if they have a four points, they fall under the counseling notice, and it falls off at 12 months versus three, which is our solution, three months, okay? 
So the, the employee cannot be late whatsoever. One, two, three more times for an entire 12 months or else they're gonna fall under the next category. And that will roll for 12 months. Here, it rolls for three months in effect. This, even this, with three months of accrual points will show that will help those with chronic absenteeism. And it will even improve on low and average employees that have a problem with attendance. This is the solution that we're trying to implement. So again, let's go back. Research shows that the control policy, attendance policy has no effect on those that uh, are average to low absentees. An attendance policy, okay, that is called at no fault attendance policy where they accrue points for being late can work. It just needs to be managed effectively with the number of months that they are in effect. Let me conclude by highlighting this. Clearly we have illustrated that absenteeism is not an issue within the organization. That at minimum an employee would have to miss minimum 10, but in reality it should be 18 to 20 days missed per calendar year, which right now that is not the case here within the organization. The issue, again, with the attendance policy is that it's creating a retention problem. 30% of the workforce was terminated within one year of one market. Imagine that across the entire organization. Cost for disaster. 22% of the workforce voluntarily resigned because of the control attendance policy. What I'm trying to get at here today is that there is an issue. The issue is not the employees. The issue is the attendance policy being implemented where it's forcing employees to leave because they cannot manage or have a work-life balance. I ask you please to review these numbers. Take them seriously because they are affecting a lot of things across the market. Turnover productivity, customer service, and the list goes on and on. These are frontline front line employees that do the job to help our customers. Thank you for listening. I will have this forwarded to you guys so you can have a reference back to it so you can look at the numbers. Thank you very much.